All right, welcome to part three of the lock picking tutorial. Uh, in the last two, we got it set up so you can press F to show the lock and press F again to hide it. So now we need to write the actual logic for the lock picking. So uh, as you might expect, that is all going to be done inside of the BP lock pick. So if we open this up, um, we're going to need to define a good amount of variables here. So just uh, follow along the best that you can. So, well, actually follow along perfectly because otherwise it won't work. <laughs> so click on variable. And the first one we're gonna want to add is um, the rotate lock axis. And this is just gonna be whatever the value currently is for the mouse. So it's the value for the, the lock axis, which is the mouse. It'll make more sense when we once we hook it up but I just want to create all these variables uh, right now ahead of time. So we want to set this to private and we also want to move it to a category called private. And we can duplicate this because we want the same type of stuff. And this is going to be the min unlock axis or, or min unlocks angle, sorry. Yeah, min unlock angle. So this is basically going to be the, the minimum angle that the bobby pin has to be at before it will unlock. And we want another one for the max unlock angle. And we're going to set these values um, based off the difficulty that gets passed in. And we want another one, so go ahead and duplicate this again. And this is going to be called um, the allowed lock rotation. And what this variable is, is basically uh, how much the lock is allowed to rotate. So the closer the bobby pin is to the, the sweet spot, the more the lock will be allowed to rotate. Um, so that's what that variable we keep in track of. And we need another one for if the pin is shaking or not. So pin shaking, question mark. And this one's actually going to be a uh, Boolean because it's just going to be true or false. So those are all the private variables we need. Um, but we also want to create uh, a handful of constants. So create a new variable. And this one is going to be for the lock rotation speeds. This is basically how fast the lock will rotate when you hold down the spacebar. And we want that to be a float. And we want it to be blueprint read only and private. And I'm going to drag it up to the constant section that we already created. And we want another one for the max pin angle. So this is um, actually, we should probably add in parentheses absolute. So this is the absolute, as in an absolute value, angle that the bobby pin can be at. Because you've noticed uh, in the video, the bobby pin can rotate 90 degrees to the left and 90 degrees to the right. It can't go any further than that. So we should probably be setting these. So the max pin angle, um, we're going to set to 90. And the lock rotation speed, uh, we're going to set to, I guess, 100. And again, feel free to uh, modify these constants however you see fit. But these are just the ones I used for the video at the beginning. So uh, we need another one for the max lock angle. And this is basically how far the lock will rotate. Because um, currently it goes from you know down here and then it rotates 90 degrees when you unlock it. So I have that set to 90 in mind. So pile and set it to 90. And then we need another one for the pin shake amount. So this is going to determine like how intensely the pin shakes whenever it's um, under pressure. So pin shake amount. And we're going to set this one to, uh, I believe, 0 0.5 is the number I used. And the last one we want is another, oops duplicate this again, and we're going to call this the max lock move angle. And I honestly don't even remember what this one's for. Um, let me look real quick. Uh, max lock move angle. Max locks move angle. Oh, right. This one is... Um, <laughs> The, these will make more sense as as we implement them, but set this one to 45 degrees. What this is is basically, um, like at what 
because as you move the lock closer to the sweet spot, the lock will start to move to show you're getting closer. But there needs to be some threshold where if it's more than 45 degrees in this case, the lock won't move at all. So that's what that's for. Um, I, I'll try to explain these like as I'm using them. But um, so yeah, this is all of the variables we're gonna need. Um, I think we might need some functions as well. Yeah, we're gonna need a good amount of functions. So under the function setting or the, the functions uh, tab, we want to add a bunch of private functions. So create a function. Uh, this one's gonna be called get lock rotation. And these are just gonna make our lives easier. I know it's kind of a pain to set them all up right now, but it's just gonna keep the code like way more organized and way easier to follow. So this one's pretty simple. It's just gonna get the current location of the lock. And this one's gonna be pure and constant and private. And I'm gonna add it to a private category like so. And the next one we want, actually just go ahead and duplicate this one because it's gonna be pretty similar. This one's gonna be called get pin rotation, which by pin, I mean the bobby pin. And then the next one we want is a function to check if the pin is in the sweet spot or like the unlock range is what I'm gonna call it. So is pin in unlock range, question mark. And again, oh, I keep forgetting. Just if you duplicate it, it makes it a lot easier because then it copies like all these variables on the left. So is pin in unlock range, question mark. And then we want another one. So duplicate that one. And we'll call it rotate lock. So this is going to handle rotating the lock. Um, for this one, we don't want pure or constant, so uncheck both of those. Uh, and then duplicate this one. We want one for handling the tick. And we can leave that as is. And we want another one for set lock rotation, which is like a hard set to set the lock rotation to something if we need to. Uh, we want another one for rotating the bobby pin, so rotate pin. And we want another one for update the allowed lock rotation, which is going to handle updating uh, this value to figure out how much the lock can be rotated based on how close we are. And we want one more for setting the pin offset, so set pin offset. and what is that gonna even do? I don't remember. Set pin offset. Um, oh, this is for the shaking of the pin. <laughs> Sorry, I wrote this a little while ago. I'm trying to remember what it all does. Okay, so these are all the functions and all the variables that we're gonna need. I know it seems like a lot, and that's because it is. <laughs> it's not. It's not a very simple thing. So to get started, uh, we'll go to the event graph, and inside of here. Um, I guess we can probably just delete like most of this. Yeah, just go ahead and delete this because we'll just add it back if we need it. Um, but the two main things we want um, is we want to check input for moving the mouse and having the spacebar pressed. So if we come back here to the main window and we go to edit project settings, we need to add uh, input for these. So in the input section, um, we want to add Actually, we want to add um, ax axis mappings, yeah. So under axis mappings, expand that and click the plus button. And we will call the first one uh, rotate pin. And we will bind this to the mouse x value. So whatever the x value of the mouse is, which is left and right, is what that will be tied to. And we want another one, so click this again for rotating the lock, so rotate lock. And I'm gonna bind this to the spacebar, so as you hold on the spacebar, okay. And we can go back to our uh, BP lock pick. So back in the event graph, um, we can add those two events. So input, access, rotate lock. And on this one, the first thing we're gonna set is our rotate lock access. So we want to save this access value. And we want to say, um, well, actually, just leave that for right now. So we want to add the other one. So input uh, pin, or input access, rotate pin. And on this one, um, 
Oh, we forgot to add a macro. So we, we want to add a pretty simple macro here. Um, so go ahead and create a macro. And this macro is going to help us to determine if we currently are allowing pin rotation or not. So allow pin rotation. Because if you think about it, um, we don't want to allow pin rotation if um, if the, if the player is currently holding down the spacebar. Because you can't rotate the pin and rotate the lock at the same time. So um, drag in the rotate axis amount, which again is just you know how much is the mouse moving. And we want to say if this um, equals zero, then of course we want to allow rotation. So hook this up and true and false. And another thing we're going to actually add as well um, is we want to make sure that the actor tick is enabled. And I'll explain why we're going to do that uh, once we get to it. But if you just say um, is actor tick enabled, and we want to just say and boolean, pick that up and replace that. So again, if the mouse is uh, not moving and the actor tick is enabled, then go ahead and allow pin rotation. So back in the event graph, um, if they're trying to rotate the pin, the first thing we want to check is if the pin rotation is allowed. So drag in that macro. And if it is, around, is allowed, then we want to say rotate pin. And we want to pass in um, this value, actually. Um, but currently, this function doesn't take in anything because we haven't written it yet. So we will go ahead and double click on this and write it right now. So the first thing we want to do is uh, add an input parameter for the rotation. So say, uh, actually, just float. And this will be called rotation. So we want to basically get the current position or the current rotation of the pin and add to it. So we have a function for that to get pin rotation. So drag in that. Uh, and we actually need to fill out this function as well. <laughs> so open this up. Uh, this one's pretty simple. So the pin rotation uh, is going to be the bobby pin. And we want to get the relative rotation. And we want to split this. And we really only care about the x axis. Because if you look and you click on this, um, if you look at the x axis, uh, this is the rotation that we care about, right? The x. So um, back here, uh, where, where am I? Uh, get pin rotation. Please let me click this. Get pin rotation. OK. So again, the x is the only thing we care about. So we'll drag that as the return type. And I'm just going to rename it to rotation so it's not so long. So this gets the rotation of the pin uh, on the x-axis, which is the one we care about. So back in the uh, rotate pin, we now get the pin rotation. And we want to say the rotation that's passed in. We want to do float plus the get pin rotation. And we want to make sure that this value um, doesn't go like, so we want to make sure the pin doesn't rotate further than negative 90. And we want to make sure that it doesn't go um, past the max allowed pin angle. So to do that, we will say clamp float. And the min value is going to be our um, max pin angle which again is an absolute value, so it's going to be positive. We currently have it set to 90. We want the negative version of that, so float times negative 1. Hook that up as the min. And for the max, we just want the max pin angle. So it's just saying don't go between negative 90, or you know, only go between negative 90 and positive 90. Uh, anything else is invalid. And then we'll say uh, bobby pin set relative rotation. And again, we only care about the x value. So split this and drag that into the x. And probably select teleport is a good idea as well. OK, so that's setting our pin rotation. So then back in the event graph, um, again, we're saying 
when they try to rotate the pen, make sure we're allowing pen rotation, and then actually go and rotate the pen. And we actually want to negate this value because it turns out that when the mouse moves right, we actually want it to go left. So just multiply this by a negative one before we pass it in and pass it in like so. And all right, so below this, we want to add um, the event tick. So right click and say event tick. And off of here, um, we want to call handle tick, so handle tick. And this is going to take in the delta seconds because we want to pass that along. So open this up and in the input, say delta seconds. I'll save that. And then back in the grip pass, we can pass that in. And we'll fill this out. We'll fill this function out uh, in a little bit. Um, we want to create two more events um, for the pin shaking. So add custom event. And this one is begin pen shake. And the last one is add custom event. We'll call it in pen shake. So this is how we're going to control uh, when the pen is shaking and how we start it and stop it. And we'll fill those out in a little bit as well. So back here at the top, um, there's one more thing we want to do um, when they're trying to rotate the lock. Um, we want to check if this value is currently uh, equal to zero. So we'll say float equals. So if it's equal to zero, um, we want to we want to ensure that the pin is no longer shaking because if they're not holding down the space bar, um, the pin should not be shaking because that means they're not trying to move the lock. So we'll do a branch and we'll call our end pin shake. So and so yeah, this is gonna get called like a bunch, but if it's if the if you call it in pin shake a bunch, um, we're just gonna write it so that it doesn't actually matter if you call it you know more than once. All right, so that's good. So we can go into the the handle tick now, um, which is where a good amount of the code is gonna be. So inside of here, um, the first thing we want to do is we want to we want to update the allowed lock rotation because we want to know like this frame how much is the lock allowed to rotate. Because again, the lock is allowed to rotate depending on where the bobby pin is. If the bobby pin is really close to the sweet spot, then the lock can rotate almost to 90 degrees. If the lock's nowhere near it, then, or sorry, if the bobby pin is nowhere near the sweet spot, then the lock shouldn't be able to rotate at all. So that's what this function is going to do. Um, and we should probably go in here and write this while we're here. So inside of this function, um, the first thing we're going to want to do is create a sequence node. So hold down S. I held down S and left clicked. Um, you can also create one by searching for sequence, but S left clicking is a little quicker. And the first thing we want to do is check if the pin is currently like in the sweet spot. So we have a function for that, and it will say is pin in the unlock range. And we need to fill out this function as well, which this one is going to be pretty easy. So I double click on this one, and we want to say get pin rotation, which we've already filled out. And we want to check if this is in a specific range, so we'll say in range. And we want to know if it's in the um, min unlock range or the max unlock range. And include those as inclusive and return that value. So it's basically just saying, hey, is the pin rotation you know, within the min and the, the max uh, valid values for unlocking the lock? And go ahead and return that value. So back in the allow or update allowed lock rotation, we can say um, is the pin in the unlock range, and we'll do a branch off of that. And if it is, then we want to basically set how close the pin is to being there, um, where one is completely there and zero is nowhere near it. So we're going to create a local variable for this, and it's going to be called pin closeness. And again, so if it's if it's one, that means the the pin is you know exactly where it needs to be. If it's zero, it's nowhere near it. If it's somewhere in between there, then obviously it's you know somewhere in between. So we'll drag this in, and if it's true, we're going to set it to one because we're saying right, it's already in the right spot. So go ahead and set it to one. Um, otherwise, we need to do some math to figure out uh, exactly how close it is. So 
um, we need to create one more local variable called pin angle from valid. So this is basically uh, the uh, how far the angle or how far the pin is away from being within the min and the max angle in terms of angles. So if the min angle is 40 and the max angle is 50 and the pin is currently at 30, then it's going to be 10 away from being valid. So this is going to get set to 10. So that's kind of what we're calculating down here. So we want to set this. Um, we want, basically want to do the math I just said. So we're going to uh, get the pin rotation. So get pin rotation. And we want to do float minus the uh, max unlock angle. Max unlock angle. And so we're either going to do that or we're going to do the min unlock angle float minus the get pin rotation again. And then, so we're going to do either one of these, but we need to know which one to do depending on if the pin is to the left or to the right of the valid angle. So to do that, we can just say, we can check if this is greater than zero. And if it is, I guess we can do a select. So if it's true, then we want to use this one. If it's false, we want to use this one. That's basically saying like, okay, the pin's t too far to the left, or is the pin too far to the right? And depending on if it's too far to the left or too far to the right, um, we need to calculate that angle differently. So that is the pin angle from valid. So now that we have um, how far the pin away is from being valid in terms of angles, we can divide this um, by this, uh, where is it? Um, this max lock move angle. And again, this is that 45 degrees that we specified. So if you think about it, um, if the pin is exactly 45 degrees away from being valid, then it's going to say 45 divided by 45, and it's going to give you 1. Um, and we're actually going to do 1 minus that, so it's going to, really going to give you 0. So it's going to say that it's not, it's not close at all to being valid. And that's because the max lock move angle is set to 45. But if, if the pin was at, say, like 10 degrees away from being valid, and you did 10 divided by 45, um, you're going to get like, you know, 0 0.2 or something around there. And then if we do 1 minus that, you're going to get 0 0.8. So you're going to say, oh, it's pretty close to being valid, but it's not quite there. So that's kind of the, the logic behind that, if that makes sense. So again, we want to, uh, we want to make sure that we clamp this between 0 and 1 just to be safe. And then we want to do one minus because we actually want the opposite. So do float minus. And we actually want this to go into the bottom. And alt left click to detach that and change this to a one. And then that is what we're going to set the pin closeness to. So pin closeness. So again, just to recap, because I know that it might be a little bit confusing, we're saying, um, you know, are we in the unlock range? Or, you know, is the bobby pin in the correct spot? If it is, then set the closeness to one, meaning that it's. It's perfectly close. It's exactly where it needs to be. Otherwise, we want to check um, if the if the pin rotation is you know too far to the left or too far to the right. And if it is, we want to calculate you know how far away it is in terms of angles, how far away it is from an, from a valid angle. And then based off that value, we're going to set the pin closeness. All right. So now that we have the pin closeness set, um, we basically just want to return this value. Um, and multiply it by the the uh, max lock angle, and that's going to give us the amount that we're allowed to rotate the lock. So if we say pin closeness, oops, pin closeness, float times, and I'll print some of this out so it makes a little bit more sense. Uh, get max, or I guess it's just over here. Uh, max, not that one. Max lock angle. And that is going to be our allowed lock rotation. And that's the final thing that we need to do in this function. So again, I know this might be a little bit confusing, but hopefully once I print out these values, it will make a little bit more sense. So if you go back to, um, I guess we're back in the event graph and then back in handle tick. Oh yeah, we were in handle tick. Okay, so back in handle tick, um, we want to, now that we have the allowed lock rotation um, calculated, 
we want to check if the player is currently trying to rotate the lock or not. So we can check that by getting the rotate lock access and checking if it's greater than zero. And if it is, we can do a branch. And again, this is just checking, you know, oops, oops. Uh, is player rotating lock? And if he is, um, then we want to rotate the lock. Otherwise, we want the lock to slowly go back to um, being unrotated. Because if you if you let go of spacebar, then the, then the lock kind of just goes back to the default position. So, but if he is holding, if he is rotating it, then we want to say uh, rotate lock, which I can't find. Rotate lock. And we need to write this function as well. This one's going to be pretty simple. So this one just needs to take in a, actually, I guess it's not going to be too simple. It needs to take in a float for the rotation. So we'll say rotation. And we want to do a sequence again. So sequence. And first and foremost, uh, we want to check if the rotation value that's passed in is greater than zero. So we'll say get rotation which again is just this value being passed in, float greater than zero. And if it is, all right, so if the rotation um, is greater than zero, that means we're trying to rotate the lock. Um, we want to check if the lock has been, or if the lock has been fully rotated, because the lock has been fully rotated to like, you know, 90 degrees, then we've successfully uh, picked the lock and we want to notify them of that. So if it's greater than zero, um, we're going to say, we're going to grab this again, so copy and paste this. We're going to check if this um, plus the current lock rotation, so um, get lock rotation, and we need to write this function as well. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Uh, just double click on that. Uh, this one's actually going to be super simple. We're just going to say interlock uh, get relative rotation. And for the interlock, um, we also only care about the x-axis because if you go back to the viewport and you look at the interlock, you can see it's rotating on this x, this uh, red one, rotates around like this. So uh, back in the lock pick and the get lock rotation, if I can get back there, uh, we only want to return the roll value. So like this one, and we will call this rotation for the return type. And now I don't remember where we were. Uh, where were we? Event tick, handle tick, uh, rotate lock. Oh yeah, we were in rotate lock. Okay, so rotate lock. So we say is the rotation that they're providing plus the current rotation. So it's kind of checking like the rotation that it's um, going to have. If this is greater than or equal to our max uh, lock angle. So again, the max lock angle is like the angle that it needs to reach um, for it to be unlocked. So 90 degrees in this case. 90 degrees. If it's greater than or equal there, um, check this. And if it is, then we've successfully picked the lock because the lock has rotated the full distance. Um, so we just want to set the lock rotation to 90 just so it doesn't go past it. So it doesn't look like buggy or anything. So set lock rotation. Um, this is another one we need to set. Uh, this one's this one's super easy. Um, we're just going to drag in the inner lock and say set relative rotation. And again, we only care about the x, so we'll split this and hook that up like so. And I'm going to rename this to rotation. And then back in rotate lock. So if we have successfully rotated uh, the full 90 degrees, again, this is checking if it's greater than equal or greater than or equal to. So we could rotate past it if the frame rate is really low or something. So we want to set this to the max lock angle so it doesn't go past it. So drag in the max lock angle again, like so. And we want to call this on picked event. So we'll say call on picked. And again, I, I know I did that kind of fast, but you just drag in this event dispatcher and say call. And it will call it. And again, this event dispatcher is the event that we're listening to back in the lockpick level. Uh, we're not currently doing anything, but that will basically call this event. 
to let to let us know that we've successfully picked the lock. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to set the actor tick enabled to false. So set actor tick enabled to false. And the reason we want to do that is because we don't want any of this logic to continue to run. Once the lock is picked, it's picked. We just want everything to stay still until it's closed. Because um, we don't want the player to be able to do any more input or do anything else. Once the lock is picked, it's picked. So we want to set this to false. And then we can just add a little return node here because we really don't need to do anything else. We just want to return immediately. Okay, but if we have not, I'm going to scoot this over. So back here, um, it's checking, you know, have we, have we reached the full uh, 90 degrees that we need to get to to unlock the, unlock the lock. And if we haven't, then we want to check, um, we kind of want to do the same thing. We want to say, is the rotation that they're telling us to rotate plus the current location, is that more than we're actually allowed to rotate? Because again, the pin is, or the, the lock is only allowed to rotate so far, depending on where the, the bobby pin is. So we can actually copy this, all these, put it down here. And instead of the max lock angle, which again is the angle you know we're trying to get to ultimately, we want to check if it's greater than the allowed lock angle. And if it is um, greater than or equal to that value, then that's actually uh, bad because you know they've they're trying to rotate further than they're allowed to. So at that point, we want to start shaking the pin to tell them, nope, your bobby pin is not in the correct spot. So the lock cannot rotate any further. So we're going to call, well, actually, we're going to say set lock rotation again, except we want to set it to this value just so we can make sure it doesn't go past it. And then we're going to want to say begin pin shake. And so this is going to cause the pin to start shaking. And then we'll add another return node. So return node, just because we don't want anything else to happen in this function after this point. We just want to get out of there. Um, so at this point, um, I'm just kind of looking over this code because I think I realized this might be, no, this is fine. Okay. So yeah, so back here in the sequence, um, if none of those returns got hit, then that means, you know, we either, we, we didn't win or we didn't, you know, successfully pick the lock yet. And, but we're not quite past the allowed lock rotation. So at that point, we want to actually lo ro rotate the lock because you know it's it's valid rotation. So we'll say interlock add local rotation and hook that up. And if we split this, uh, we want to add it to the X as usual. And we want to use this rotation. I'm just gonna copy it from right here. And we can go ahead and hit teleport again, because I think that's probably a good way to do it. Okay, so now we got our rotate lock function written. Um, I think we're pretty close, hopefully, to getting it done. So let's go back to the event tick and the handle tick and figure out where we left off. Uh, handle tick. Okay, so yeah, so we left off by checking if is the player rotating the lock. If they are rotating the lock, then we want to rotate the lock by a certain amount. So we need to figure out how much we want to rotate the lock by. And to do that, um, we want to rotate it by the rotate lock axis, which is down here. So however much you know they're pressing the spacebar, it's basically just going to be one if they're pressing the spacebar. Um, and then we want to multiply that by the speed. So we'll do a float times. So we want to rotate it by the lock rotation speed lock rotation speed which we have set to 100 so drag that in and we also want to multiply it by the delta seconds that get passed in over here on the left so we'll say get delta seconds hook that up and hook that up to the rotation so again we're just saying is the player rotating the lock if he is go ahead and rotate the lock pretty simple uh, and then if they're not trying to rotate the lock, we want to check if the lock is currently rotated. Because if it's currently rotated, we want to rotate it back um, to the starting point. So off of here, uh, we want to do a branch. And that branch is going to be checking exactly that. We want to say, hey, is the lock currently rotated? So we'll drag in the get lock rotation. And we'll say float greater than zero. So if it is rotated, 
Um, we want to do some stuff. If it's not rotated, we don't really care. We don't want to do anything. Um, we want to rotate the lock backwards. So we can use this rotate lock function again. So copy that and bring that down. And again, we want to rotate it backwards. So uh, we can copy all of this, drag it up here, hook it up. But instead of the um, rotate lock axis, we just want to pass in negative one so that it goes backwards. And after that, um, we also want to make sure that we don't rotate it too far backwards. Like we don't want to go past zero and start going the other way. So we want to say, you know, after we rotate it, we want to check that it is still greater than zero. So if it's less than zero, um, we'll do a branch and we'll set it to zero. So set lock rotation, where is that function? Set lock rotation and we will pass in zero like so. So again, is this, hold on, is this function written? Yeah, okay, we wrote that. So, and it'll tick. All right, so this function is now complete. And again, just to recap, we're saying, um, the first thing we wanna do is figure out how much the lock is allowed to be rotated based off the bobby pin. And then we wanna check, is the player trying to rotate the lock? If they are, then we wanna rotate the lock um, based off the speed. And if they're not, then we want to rotate it back to zero rotation so that it goes back to normal. Okay, um, is that it? I think that might be it other than the um, shaking of the lock. So let me save all. And let's go ahead and run this so I can show you kind of how it looks. So actually we should probably do some printing to kind of show you like exactly what's going on. Uh, let me switch my other project for, ooh, that was a lot of stuff. Uh, let's see, okay. So, ah, uh, yes. Okay, so back in the event tick, um, this will kind of help you understand exactly what's going on. We want to print out the current pins rotation so to do that, um, we'll say get pin rotation, and we want to eventually print string, and we want to um, uh, let's see. So just type append because we're going to need to append this. So drag those into here, and we want to print out the pin rotation colon. And then this. So now we're, we're basically just printing out the pin look, the pin's current rotation. And we also want to print out the allowed rock, a lock rotation. And uh, we can just copy all of this pretty much. Except instead of the pin rotation, we want the allowed pin rotation. So allowed pin rotation, like so. So if you go ahead and rerun this now, um, make sure you're on the correct map, which is this one. Press F. Um, oh, let me change this to be zero seconds. Uh, yeah, change these prints to be zero so that it's not just spamming everything. All right, now hopefully we did this right. Uh, let me just look. That looks, why am I printing this out twice? Oh, I didn't rename it, oops. Uh, loud pen rotation, that should be called allowed pen rotation. Come back here and run this. Okay, so you can see, yeah. So it will make more sense when we add a little bit more de debugging code, but you can see, the bottom number is printing out the pins rotation. So right now it's at 90 and right now it's at negative 90. And the allowed pin rotation is, or sorry, this should be called allowed lock rotation. <laughs> sorry, it's getting late. So this is the allowed lock rotation. So if we come back here, um, you can see if I have it all the way over here on the left, the allowed lock rotation is currently zero. So if I try to rotate the lock, I'm holding down space for right now, uh, nothing's happening. But if I move the bobby pin closer to where the sweet spot is, you see now it's gonna allow me to rotate it 16 degrees. 
So if I hold down space, you can see it rotates 16 degrees. And if I move it a little closer, see now I can rotate 67 degrees. And if I get it up to uh, 90, oh, it's because we haven't actually calculated it, but you can see it kind of is working. Um, now I can rotate 87 degrees. Um, and the reason it's not letting us rotate a full 90 degrees is because we haven't actually calculated the min and the max unlock angle yet based off the difficulty passed in. So we can do that next, but this is a good thing to print out just to kind of help us visualize. So back in the construction script um, of the lockpick, um, we want to do a few things. So the first thing we want to do, uh, we're already doing it, it's showing the actor components. And the next thing we want to do is take this difficulty value that was um, set up in our construction and do a select. And we want to set the uh, like the range that we want to be able to, you know, have the lock unlock at. So we have this min unlock angle and this max unlock angle. And currently they're both set to zero. So we need to figure out what those are. So go ahead and create a local variable for the unlock half radius and or unlock half range. Sorry. So this is half the range that is needed for uh, the pin to be at the correct angle. So we're going to set this and we're going to do float divide by two. So whatever number you put in here, oops, whatever number you put inside here is going to be um, the angle that the bobby pin is valid at. So if it's easy, you might want to say like, you know, 15. So they, there's 15 degrees of leniency. If it's medium, maybe 10. If it's hard, uh, five. And I'll actually ha I'll actually render out these angles so it's a little easier for you to see what's going on. But so this is basically the half the half range that we want to use. And so we want to calculate a min and a max unlock angle based off that. So to do that, we're going to take the um, well we need to calculate the unlock angle first. So add a local variable for the unlock angle. And we want to set this based off the unlock half angle. So set, and it's going to be the uh, the max angle that the pin can be at. Float minus the unlock half radius or half range. I mean, and we want to do a random float in. So random float in range. And the max is going to be this, and the min is going to be this, but just the negative version of it. So float times negative one. And that is going to be our unlock angle. So this is the essentially the center of like the very perfect sweet spot in the middle of where we can unlock it at. And then from there, we want to calculate um, the min unlock angle and the max unlock angle. So min unlock angle and max unlock angle. Drag those in because we're going to be setting both of these. So the min unlock angle is going to be our unlock angle minus the unlock half range. So unlock angle float minus the unlock half range, like so. And our max unlock angle is going to be our unlock angle plus our half unlock range, like so. All right, um, and after that, um, well, actually, that's technically all we need to do, but it's going to be super helpful if I render these out so you can see exactly what we're looking at. So to do that, um, let's come back here real quick, and we're going to add two like debug things just so we can see them a little easier. So add uh, two static meshes, and again, these are just for debugging, and make sure you add them down here. Don't add them as a child of anything else, and this will be called the Bobby pin min and duplicate that and call it bobby pin max and so click on this first one and we want to just sign some sort of static mesh i think a pillar would probably work fine <laughs> doesn't really matter uh it's a little big so let's scale this down a little bit we'll say 0 0.01 0 0.01 and like 0 0.2 just some sort of line to indicate uh where it should be. And let's move this out to 19. And that looks probably pretty good, I think. 
yeah so that looked fine and then i'm going to set this to like uh is there a green color uh yeah okay i guess that works green <laughs> you don't have to change the color if you don't want to but so this is showing where the min angle is that's valid and then we want to do the same thing for the max so actually i'm just going to delete this max one and duplicate this again just so it copies all that stuff that we just did and set that as the max so in the construction ship we're going to rotate these based off whatever angles we calculate so we're going to go back to the construction script and then inside of here um well, i'm trying to look at my notes again real quick just so i don't mess this up uh okay so in the construction script we want to grab the min and say set relative rotation and this is going to be split and we want this to be the min unlock angle for the roll and we want to do the same thing for the max get rid of the max and set relative rotation and this is going to be split and set it to the max unlock angle for the roll all right so now if we go back to the construction script or sorry the viewport uh, you'll see every time you compile this these lines change and it's actually showing you what it's calculating for the valid unlock range. So it's choosing a range um, based off this difficulty. Because if you look in the construction script, we're saying if the difficulty is easy, then we're going to set it to 15. If it's medium, we're going to set it to 10. If it's hard, we're going to set it to 5. So if we change this 15 to 90, just so it's super obvious what's happening, and compile and go back to the viewport, you see it creates a 90 degree angle um, somewhere in that range of where the pick has to be. So obviously 90 is super easy because you know how hard is it to guess in or to find an angle inside of there is really big. So that's why you want to set it to something like 15. But you can see if we change um, if we change the difficulty to you know hard by default, um, you'll see it creates a very tiny angle um, for where it needs to be. Um, I'm gonna change it back to easy. And if we go ahead and run it, you can actually see these uh, running at runtime so you can kind of figure out exactly what's happening. So if you look at the bobby pin, um, if I have it over all the way over here on the right, you can see the pin rotation is currently set to negative 90 because it's all the way rotated to the right. And it says the allowed lock rotation is zero. So if you try to hold down spacebar, the lock does not rotate at all because we're so far away. We have to get within 45 degrees of the first green line in order for the lock to start rotating. And that 45 degrees is what we have defined here for the allowed rock, um, or not, not there, the... Uh, max lock move angle is 45 degrees. If we were to make this bigger, then we would make it so that the pin allows you to start rotating sooner. But currently we have this set to 45 degrees. So it's saying the bobby pin has to be within 45 degrees before this allowed lock rotation at the top left will start going up at all. So even if we're all the way over here, we still can't rotate the lock at all. Um, but if we get a little bit closer, you can see as we get closer, the pin rotation on the bottom goes up. So right when we get right up next to the line, um, you can see, it gets all the way up to 66 and oh sorry i was looking at the wrong number so yeah as soon as we get all the way up to the green line the allowed rock uh, the allowed lock rotation gets all the way up to 88 because we're like almost there so if we were trying to rotate at this point you'd see we get all the way up to 88 degrees almost get there to 90 degrees uh, if we go past it you can see we can also do the same thing on the other side oops i think i went too far um, we get all the way up to 88 degrees we're so close but as soon as we get inside, it doesn't matter where we are, you can see the allowed lock rotation stays at 90 because it's saying, okay, you're within the valid range of the lock, so you can rotate a full 90 degrees. So at that point, we've, un we've opened the lock. Um, the ticking has stopped because we disabled tick, so that's why it totally freezes like that. But at this point, um, yeah, just make sure like all of this logic or you know exactly what's happening on my screen is happening on your screen. Like make sure these numbers are printing out the right thing. You know, make sure it goes all the way up to 87 degrees when you're really close. And yeah, I, hopefully I explained it well enough for you to see exactly what's going on. So I'm going to wrap this up in the next video because this one's getting kind of long.